Senator Lyndon B. Johnson's heart attack hit him on July 2, 1955, while he was visiting a businessman friend and benefactor in the Virginia horse and estate country west of Washington. President Dwight D. Eisenhower's came barely ten weeks later, on a late September evening, while he was visiting his in-laws near Denver. This unprecedented cardiac doubleheader was medically no minor event. Johnson was kept in the U.S. Naval Hospital just outside Washington for seven weeks and didn't resume his frenetic work schedule until December. Eisenhower remained in Fitzsimmons Army Hospital in nearby Aurora, Colorado for seven weeks and wasn't working at his accustomed pace until after the new year. The shock to the country's governance and politics was similarly severe. Eisenhower was felled as he was beginning to gear up for what most observers assumed would be a relatively easy run for re-election in 1956. The war hero and America's 34th president was popular and not without major successes in his first term. Now, suddenly, his future was in doubt. Johnson was a rookie, having become the Senate's majority leader only that January, after the Democratic Party regained control of the Senate in the previous year's elections. But he had been learning the ropes of leadership for nearly 20 years. His dreams of the presidency were only dreams. First, he had a Senate to run. But now his doctors kept him from the work he loved. In the 21st century, it is commonplace for heart patients to be up, active, and working within weeks, often days. This wasn't the case in 1955, when long recuperations predicted long-term disability. In his 40s, and clearly recovering, Johnson was still robust, but doubts about the health of the 65-year-old Eisenhower persisted for months.